Hi, um, I'm Emily Nussbaum. I'm the uh, TV critic at The New Yorker, and um, I'm here to do a panel discussion with, um, with Dean Norris and Betsy Brandt, whose names I wrote down in case I became so panicked in front of the auditorium that I suddenly <laughs> forgot. Um, but I'm very excited to introduce them, and you guys have just seen the episodes. Um, I was also told to mention that this is being live streamed, so I could create a certain kind of mystical paranoia in the audience. Um, so I, I would like to introduce uh, Betsy and Dean are gonna come up on stage. They play Hank and Marie. Welcome. Yeah. I love the hand time. Hello. Let's so have you guys been binge watching all week long? Or you've just watched the two episodes and they were the episodes that these guys picked out. And I was watching part of the episodes and I have to say I was so struck by the um, the scene, the elevator scene, where you're standing, it's just, it was both funny and incredibly moving, where you're Sorry. standing in the elevator right after Hank is let go, and then you're just standing facing forward in this very official way, and then you're embracing and crying, and then you're standing facing forward as the elevator opens. And um, I wondered when I was watching that whether that was your sense of what the marriage was between those two characters. I don't know why I'm talking about it in the past tense, we haven't seen the new season, but just to see you guys so privately weeping on each other's shoulders in a way that we hadn't really seen Hank and Marie, who are often so comic, and I wondered if you could tell me a little bit about that scene and filming that. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, uh, it was really, that was one, we were talking about this earlier today, it was the one scene that um, I, um, I asked Betsy to not kind of, I didn't want to see her, it's like the wedding, you know, I didn't want to see her before <laughs> the thing, and um, it was such a it was such an important scene to me, as was the sitting on the bed and talking to her scene for my for the whole I think that explains all uh, what Hank's all about, and um, we um, we uh, it was so great because Hank has this worst day ever, and then he, you never see him call something like it's someone like almost like psychically she knew to come you know, and he's he's leaving and walking the walk of shame. And he's, he's like just the worst. And, and all of a sudden the elevator opens. And that's the first time I saw you. We did it one take. And, uh, and I just saw her and I just couldn't stop, you know. It was just to see her there and, you know, after that horrible day, it was just, um, it was great. And, it, and you did. That was the only time you've ever said. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard for me not to make a joke and say all the time, Dean is like, don't look at me while I'm in character. <laughs> don't sit by me at lunch. <laughs> don't do anything. <laughs> don't call me Dean. <laughs> um, but you did, and it was so sweet. And I remember I, I was, it was so hard for me not to cry when you cried. And um, I asked Frida, I said, did we get it? Did we get it? And she said, I, they're, they're happy with yeah. the, with one. And I said, and then I just sobbed, <laughs> which, which I do a lot on you do this all show. The time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, in these panels and at work, because I always felt like um, Marie's just so tightly wound and doesn't let it go, you know. And so I, I would have to before I go home. When you, um, when I was rewatching, because uh, I, I did binge watch much of the show this week. Um, and when I was rewatching, I was really struck by how vivid your characters are at the beginning, but how we as viewers know almost nothing about them. I mean, we really don't know the history of your relationship or a lot of things about where you got where you are. And I wondered whether early on in the first season, um, did either Vince talk to you about backdrop for your characters? Did you develop a backstory for your, for your marriage, for your characters? And how much of that was in place and how much of that just came out of the process of performing? Vince didn't, um, and we didn't really talk together much, did we, about it? No, because I'm not allowed to talk to you at work. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> and not allowed to call you Dean. Don't look at me right now, seriously. <laughs> I'm not. I'm scared to. I'm so sorry, everybody. It's going to be a long <laughs> night. Okay. I think we understood, though, that... Maybe we talked a little bit about it. I think we maybe inherently understood uh, that it was the most... 
it was the core of who Hank was. I don't know what she thought. It certainly was the core of who I thought he, Hank was. And they didn't have kids. That was oh, something that, you know, we maybe thought ourselves, we tried to figure out maybe why that was. Maybe they couldn't. Maybe they chose not to. I'm not sure. But it, it really was for Hank, any time, she was the core of his morality in the sense that when everything's got tough, the only thing he could look back, you know, hold on to, God, it's been a long fucking week. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not, I'm sorry. Is that she was there for him, you know, and, and, um, and that's the only thing he had. He didn't have kids that were there for him. He didn't have, you never knew any, but, you know, he didn't have a mom or dad, even, you know what I'm saying? It, but it was always, it was only her. And so whenever he had to make a, a tough choice or, or try to be the good guy or bad guy, it was only, it was because that she was his wife, you know. So. I, I just I love how these two would do anything for each other. Yeah, and especially in the midst of this show, where people are sometimes not very nice to one another, <laughs> to be a part of that was really, really wonderful and special. Can can we tell them about when we first the first time we met? Uh, you mean at the audition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, um, that was the first time I met Vince. Yeah, me and too. Then, okay, yeah. so we were in the waiting room. And the casting directors of this show are, are really fantastic. Yeah. They always work on good shows. In fact, they may have cast someone sitting right next to me in Under the Dome. <laughs> um, and well, that was CBS, by the way. <laughs> Nina Tassler cast that. But, but they cast his show, which is also an excellent show. Um, and we were sitting there, and I remember, I think, I don't know if, there's, if there were other people in there. No, just even. You and I said, I think this is funny. Do you think this is funny? Because I'm going in there and reading this is funny. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, me too. I like, I couldn't, because it was supposed to be a drama. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't, like, I was like, how many cameras is this? I really couldn't yeah. get a, a feel for it. And we were trying to figure out what network is on, it yeah. was on. And I think, I think one of us said NBC. That's that crazy. Right? <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> well, I really, I, really, I really didn't know. And I was like, I um, didn't know either. And I, I, I think I asked you as well. I don't know if you asked me first or I asked you. I was like, you know, are you going to read this? Is it a comedy or is it a fucking drama? What is it? AMC would never even men, men, you know, bet in my mind at all no. that the show was on there. And yeah, and I couldn't tell. I'm like, I think this is funny. Yeah. And I did. I called it a dark comedy yeah. for at least a portion of the first season. <laughs> and then, then it got so dark. The I, first episode uh, dark. of this season has laughs in it. Yeah. If you can imagine that there would be laughs, but there are. I mean, it is actually one of the strangest things about rewatching even the most serious episodes is you get this very big sinking feeling, but there's a lot of laughter. And you guys actually especially, you know, I was thinking about the fact that Hank at the beginning yeah. is particularly like comic character and kind of more buffoonish, more right. aggressive. At this point, uh, do you think of him as the hero of the show? Because he... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do, honey. <laughs> I go with what my wife says. Yes. <laughs> That's why I married her. <laughs> you, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about the fact that with the show, everybody talks about Walt's transformation, or depending on how you see it, Walt's <laughs> revelation of his real self. Right. But a lot of the other characters go through changes also. And in, in the episode that people just watched, it's a specific moment where, to me, sort of hilariously, but in this moving way, Marie is saying, you know, just lie, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is, you know, pragmatic oh, yeah. advice under these circumstances. But it is a really beautiful moment because Hank, who has been at other points, including just before that, like bumptious, aggressive and all this stuff, you make a stand about it. I mean, w this felt like a turning point in it. And I wondered how you felt about, like, what do you see as the, the arc that Hank has taken? And obviously, we can't talk about the upcoming parts, but... Um, oh, but just do now, it. Yeah, they can't so what, fire how, us. The <laughs> <laughs> they could sue us. But yeah, this is the moment. The spoilers come spilling. Here out. it comes, folks. You heard it first. Yeah. <laughs> it was certainly for me. I mean, that 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 episode and written by Thomas Schnaz and that sp particular speech, and it, it was shot in that credible way. It, and I also must say that having like watching Marie react to the speech in focus was just an amazing shot, you know what I'm saying? To, to, and, and, there's a, and they told me time and time again, or I talked, it's one of the few times I kind of went back and forth with the director, because I said, you know, every time I read this, these lines, you go through it, it's like the universe is trying to tell me something, maybe I'm, I'm just not the man I'm supposed to be. It, I don't know how you say that without tearing up, you know? And she goes, no, you can't, you can't, because Hank doesn't do that or something, you know? And I was like, I, 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 it's like, and so we did it. And then you just see a little bit of, of, of tear because I could not get through the scene. It was early in the morning, and I was like, it was just, it was so raw. And 
and when I saw it and, and saw that it was, you know, her, like it was just so awesome to, to see her, you know, the pain of me reflected in her eyes is what that, you know, that whole last, that whole scene on the bed was. And it's my favorite scene forever and ever of the world. Um, and, um, you know, just having to admit that, that this big, boisterous, violent, kind of buffoonish guy has to admit that he's not the man that he thought he was. It's just sad. <laughs> and, and, and as compared to Walt, actually takes responsibility yeah. for it. And was yeah, willing to go in there and accept the consequences. It was so, like, f for me, it just, it was heartbreaking because it was so unfair. You know, I have that line where I'm like, it shouldn't, you, you're the good guy. It's not fair. These guys, you know, they get away with it. And, you know, and he's worked so hard and she knows what a good guy he is. You know, and, and to just let those jerks get away with it <laughs> was just too difficult for Marie. Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions she about Marie. She could kick Walter White's ass. Yeah, I know, I, it's clear that this she is does. the undisclosed. <laughs> <laughs> the final scene is endless, just Marie pulverizing beating his him. Ass. Yeah, just beating the <laughs> shit out of him. With her Excuse shoe. <laughs> um, uh, the purple. <laughs> I Yeah. First of all, I have I wear no purple in my life. Ever. <laughs> I have no my daughter's bedroom is the only purple <laughs> things we have in our house. Um my husband is here and he will he will vouch for me on that. It's it's a really boring answer, but I, I have to be honest because it's just part of who I am. Um in the pilot, I really didn't have a lot of material to go on, and we all had a color. Catherine DeToro, our costume designer for the pilot in the, the first four seasons, um, gave everybody a color. Color's kind of her superpower. And my color was purple. And I said to Vince, I said, well, I think if purple is her color, then it's really her color, because I think Marie is just the kind of person, she, does, she doesn't do anything half-assed. He said okay, I, I, which could be because he thought it was a great idea or he was just really tired, but um, that's what they did and, and I, they just ran with it and I, I loved it. I had a purple coffee maker and we painted walls in the people's house that we used to there straight was shit, there, was, there, were, there was fucking shit purple that you can't imagine. <laughs> Flashlights. Dishwashing Did, gloves. A flashlight? A purple flashlight? Are you serious? Why yeah. the flashlight is on the kitchen counter, aside I don't from know. the fact it's just purple, and it's like, purple. look, we found a purple flashlight. I, I, love, I, I love that when you, you're bringing her the flowers in that scene, they're purple flowers in, yeah. purple, yeah. in a purple bag. So yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> he knows his wife. You know. yeah. No, it's true. Um, I'm checking on the time whether I should go to to questions, but I did, want, I did want to ask about the shoplifting as well, and also just about Marie's backstory a little bit, because I'd heard that you and Anna had come up with a backstory for you guys as sisters. Oh, well, we, we just agreed that we just had batshit crazy parents, <laughs> that they were just, you know, not great, just insane in, in some way, and because we just had this kind of war buddy relationship. Like, regardless, whether I steal stuff and she almost gets arrested, she's gonna always be there for me and vice versa. I mean, I, I always felt like, you know, Marie's the younger sister and, you know, it's always seemed like, my guess was that Skylar was really responsible, made all the right decisions and mm -hmm. probably did better in school and all those things, so. I, married Walter White. And then married Walter, <laughs> Walter White. Um, but so I, I always would, you know, I joke about it. I'm like, well, make sure that, you know, because props gives you fake diamond rings. I'm like, make sure mine is bigger than Skylar's because that's <laughs> important to Marie. And, and you know, any time I would be like, you know, if you guys need help financially, I think she just liked it a, a little too much, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I always, um, I, I decided in that we couldn't have kids and that was hard for Marie. Because yeah. there was always such a sadness when we were with Walton's coat, they, sh they should just, you know, we should have had those kids from the beginning. They should have just given them to us, season one. This is an alternate show. <laughs> like, um, I know you have a Twitter feed. Do you guys read response to the show online? And I'd wondered what the strangest theories that you'd read about your characters or about, if, if, you, if you look stuff up. Someone told me today at Dwayne Reed <laughs> that he thinks that Hank is cooking meth. Which I thought was really interesting. Nailed it. <laughs> and then Marie kills Walt. Just a small amount of math. Uh, um, Vince has a reputation 
unheard of among auteurist showrunners for being a totally decent guy and very menschy, collaborative. So this is a complete PR. Yeah. Fucking so thing, this is huh? the opportunity for it. Tell us the real truth. Oh man, get drunk with that dude. Yes. About two a.m. Shit goes down. <laughs> He's a big scotch drinker. We like to drink scotch together, and I, I really can't tell you what happens, but it's nasty. <laughs> Just kidding, Vince. He's, he's uh, honestly not only one of the smartest and most talented, but nicest people you would ever meet, ever. It, really, I, I feel like we're so spoiled, which is one of the reasons it's, it's so sad for this show to end, because, you know... You work, you take a job for the great material, even if the person is just a jackass, you know? Or you might work with someone who's just really wonderful, even if the show's just okay, you know? But you, we just got both in spades. What was him. it like on, on the last day of your last scene? Obviously, you can't tell us what the last scene was, but... I thought it was just bizarre. It was like that Seinfeld episode, that Bizarro episode. I felt like there was, I was there, and I was hugging, people and saying thank you and goodbye and then there was like real Betsy who was like what the fuck is happening <laughs> <laughs> it was totally bizarre to me it was it was very strange and you know, Vince showed up on on uh, people's last days and gave us a big picture I never got that picture I think I would check oh, on I that got mine. You got were there any home. rituals that it. you guys did or? like a big picture that everyone signed you know mm -hmm. uh, um, and um, but it was it was really surreal and it was it was weird. I still haven't. It was weird because I, and then I went right immediately. I was supposed to, I was supposed to, I finished like a little bit earlier in the day than I thought. And I was supposed to get on a plane the next day to go to this other show in North Carolina. And I was literally in the van going back to the hotel. And I, I got on my phone. I said, is there, is there a plane leaving that day? And they said, yes. I ran into the hotel, grabbed my stuff, literally got on the plane and uh, went. Because I couldn't take sitting in the hotel or whatever thinking about it, you know what I'm saying? It was that kind of like, let's just go and end up in you know North Carolina. <laughs> you know? So it's like this week has really been more of a, for, it's been more, it's starting to hit me all week that it's over the final premiere, all these great panels and, and all this stuff, and, and now you start going, God, we're not gonna do that again. We're not going back there. <laughs> No, I'm getting. <laughs> I'm, I'm incredibly excited to see the new episodes, as I'm sure everybody is. I want to turn it over. Just to get a few questions from the audience. Sure. So uh, I think they're going to pass around a uh, microphone there. So. Hello. So um, my question's for Dean. I was wondering if you could kind of talk about the, um, some of the differences and similarities between playing Hank and uh, Big Jim. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hank is, 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 they're totally opposite characters, and which is one of the reasons I, I took the, the, that Big Jim role. And because Hank is is so um, uh, grounded in in this w black and white world, and he wants to be the 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 good cowboy, you know, and he believes in justice. He just believes in old fashioned stuff. I mean, he's like a John Wayne kind of guy, you know. He believes that there's right and there's wrong, and no matter what, he wants to do the right thing, and he wants to try to bring the bad guys to justice. And he and he's just he's stubbornly you know, to his own detriment, you know, kind of thick in that way. And, and whereas Big Jim is, is completely amoral and is reptilian, and he's a politician who'll say whatever needs to be said at the time. He's willing to do whatever he needs to do to get what he wants. And he's able to take on different characters in order, or take, take on a, put on a different face in front of different people to, to do those things. That he, so he's really, yeah, Hank would hate Big Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Another question? Hey guys, uh, Dean, I'm curious if we're gonna see a return of your rock collection. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's fucking minerals. Thank man. you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Marie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're so heavy. They're rocks. Okay, over there. Is Marie still going to open houses pretending to be somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> that was so fun to do. I loved the names. I'm like, in my mind, she thinks these are the best names ever. Hi, I'm Charlotte Blattner. <laughs> um, I don't think she'll ever stop. 
And I think, she said, as long as he's there to clean up her mess, I think that's how say. that's going to go. <laughs> that was my favorite part of it. He's like, my husband's a DA agent. You better watch out, yeah. lady. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I Before we shot that, I had Jennifer, the actress who played the agent, I, had, I said, I'm going to apologize be- before I call you fatty. I just have to say I'm sorry. And then I can really like let loose and scream fatty in the street to you. One take, I did it twice. <laughs> fatty, you fatty, fatty. It was horribly mean. I actually love that scene. Was that yeah? Is that the scene where, where Hank and, and all he's like all oh, you know, still you know grumpy in the bat in the in the bedroom and I stuff. I love it when you're on the phone and, and had a he call and he's like oh. you know he's like fuck and I gotta you know I still gotta bail her out and all the shit's going down and I still gotta make that damn phone call. I'm like, no, don't. And then when you're talking to me, you're like don't cry. Don't, okay, yeah, don't yeah, cry. Right, yeah, yeah. All right. Damn it. All right. I'll do, do it. Push your buttons. Do you want to use mine? Hi there. Um, you both look amazing, by the way. Um, Thank so you. I just bought this I, today. It's true. It's true. So Thank you. H- Hank gets shot. He goes through uh, the physical therapy. He's got his mineral collection, and he's act for for an arc. He's acting horrible to Marie. For for both of you, this is both of you. What are your thoughts on that whole arc where where Hank is behaving this way to Marie? <laughs> uh, didn't you at one point during that season? Remember, didn't you say something like, I think I was like a little mean off screen or, or something. I said something. Oh, you, I, you would was, be so bitchy to the writers. I, I, I said, you better, they might stick you in there for the s- like next season too. I think you said, I think, because it, it, after a while it really started getting to me. Like, it like, did. It did, like, because um, you're sitting there and you're constantly being that kind of guy, you know. And I, I think, I, I forgot something, because I remember my wife said oh, something, you, said you better, my wife said some. I remember my wife saying, you better apologize to Patsy. <laughs> so, and I forgot, I didn't think it was mean, but I think it came off as mean or something. I was very bitchy. Oh, you were, bitchy you were, you were all that a little season. bitchy, and that's, yeah. that's not who you are. Yeah. That's, it was very, very strange for you. And it really was the days when you'd be in that fucking bed all day long. And, and then and all week and long, and then by, that was just, yeah, I think it really wore on you. And I feel like, like, a show like this too, it just seeps in, you know, it seeps in while you're working on it. And like you have to, like I would say, I would cr- have to cry and so after some of those scenes before I go home because you just, you just, you don't want to take that with you, you know. Like Brian has a thing; he always, he always does a hot towel all right. over, you know, and he, he, that that's for him. That's how he takes it off and, and leaves it. You what know? do you guys do? I I drink vodka. I cry. <laughs> I cry and I make jokes. No, but That's I was there, I but I, and I was there. And she had her family there. My my family was there the first season, but after that, I was always like in a hotel, so it was really de- fucking depressing. Because I'd come home and be, you know, be by myself and you know in a hotel room after you'd just been in bed, all, you know, and being really <laughs> grumpy all day. It was just it, it wore on me, you know. It really did. Well, you you asked to be written off during the first <laughs> half of the last season, right? I and did. Apparently, they told you that was not that going to happen. Copacetic, yeah. So. Just to set the record straight on that, because I've yes. had to set the record straight a lot on that. Okay. I swear to God, I didn't tell anybody about that. I don't know how people know. Like, I, I don't. I don't spill secrets. I'll give you the short. I'll give you the short answer. I'm sorry, I read the internet. They picked it up for 16, which was supposed to be the season, which was going to instead of but we were going to have a elongated final season. Instead of 13, it was going to be 16. Great. We would shoot the 16. I could do a pilot. We would shoot the 16. I'd be available to work the next thing. And then for financial reasons of the network and the studio. Fair enough, with no regard for my financial consideration, which is fine. But I got, f- <laughs> they would have us do eight and then sit around for 10 months and then do only eight more. Mm-hmm. Whereas usually, you, you know, you got a minimum they're supposed to pay you for 10 or 13. And it was a real, it was a big, it was a legal hassle on all of our parts. Say, I got to get involved, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that happened. And I said, oh no, now you're going to kill me this pilot. I can't do a pilot now and I can't do a pilot next year. So you're two years where, I, where I'm going to get paid for only eight shows, you know what I'm saying? So I said, Vince, what's the chances <laughs> of you, uh, you know, maybe it'd be a great kind of ending of the first eight if you killed Hank. And he's like, nah, Dean, you know, we, we need you, Dean, you know. Uh, <laughs> we've, been, we've, been, uh, we've been building this up for five years, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna play it out. We really need you. And, you know, I couldn't argue. I mean, you know, I was like, all right, if that's what you say, then that's what it's going to be. He said, but I promise you, I, I, we'll, you know, we'll schedule it so that we get you done in time to do the next pilot. And he did. Yeah, yeah, man of his word. I mean, by one day, he got me. Wow. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it was great. Okay. He's very high in the air hand. So. Uh, my question is for Dean. And I was wondering before the infamous toilet scene, if you, 
I, if um, if uh, there was any suspicion that Walt wasn't being on, or or did he actually believe that the winning um, at poker and at betting was actually a, a legitimate way to make this money that he's actually making? Yeah, I think that, you know, we talked about that a whole lot because we had a bunch of little times where, you know, there were, it, it, did he consider it, did he consider it? And I, I think he just didn't. I mean, I think and it could have been some subconscious in Hank's mind maybe or something, but I think the real thing is that it, it was just so unlikely for it to happen, you know? It's like when, you, when these, like, serial killers happen or something bad happens, the neighbors are always like, hey, he was a great guy, you know? We didn't, we didn't think anything about him, you know? Because, you, and he was. He was, you know, ostensibly he was a really milk toast kind of guy. He was this English teacher. He didn't really kind of think, I mean, he liked, he, lo he loved him in a way. You know, he's his brother because he didn't have a, you know, Hank didn't have a, a brother or ostensibly any other family. So Walter White was his, his brother, you know. And, uh, but, he, but even as his brother, he kind of thought he was the tough guy, and this guy was like kind of the, uh, the milk toast, you know. You know can, what did I say? Something like, I think we said something like Keith Richards, when he, when he was holding the gun in the pilot, it said something like Keith Richards holding the glass of milk or something, you know. I mean, just, yeah. it was, he just didn't respect, you know, he didn't respect him as a guy kind of guy, you know. Loved him, but it wasn't, and so he, I think once that's in your brain, you, you, it's impossible for him to ever connect that, no matter how many, you know, kind of clues were around it to kind of connect that to this guy, it would have been, would have been, that would have been bad writing if he, yeah. if he somehow figured it out, in my humble opinion. That would have made you paranoid. Yeah. For, for either of them to suspect him. Yeah. would have been just paranoia. And I think the way they wrote it, that he got close enough, close enough, but couldn't quite put it together, you know, that was the right thing to do. And uh, I thought it was just brilliant when, when, I, when I read that script. And, and uh, it wasn't like him sitting at his desk going, hmm, ding, dong, wait a minute, oh, fuck, it's Walter White. I would have liked it if you would have, they would have had you grown a beard and yeah. you could have done this mm. <laughs> while you figure it so out. So to have it be a completely serendipitous thing where he just happens to take a crap, you know. <laughs> and he did it in the master bedroom because he knew he was going to smell up the place. <laughs> I've heard people ask Very that question too. They're like, why did he go in the bathroom? I'm like, because he's not going to do it in the hallway bathroom because <laughs> people would walk by. You, you don't know? drop a deuce so right you outside drop a deuce. the dinner table. No, you go all the way into the house it's, as far as you can. It's not polite. Lock the door. You know, there weren't matches in there. What am I going to do? You know? Right. So. Well, when we got that script, um, <clears throat> You know, at the end of the seasons, they're always, you know, significant plot points are blacked out. And it's like, he sits on the toilet, and then there's blackout, blackout, blackout. <laughs> and I, 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 said to, I said to Vince, I said, oh, my God. I said, you're not going to let him die like that, like some horrible Elvis Presley death on the can, are you? And Vince sat in his chair, and he said, I like that. <laughs> He just laughed to himself, kind of like a crazy guy a little bit. And he was like, I like that. And that. But he said, no, no, that's not what happens. Okay, should I tie up or take one more question? Take, okay, tie it up. <laughs> the international sign for tie it up is coming. For tie it thank up. you so much for coming. And thank oh. you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for watching. so much for watching. Eight more. Eight more episodes. Thank you.